looks like I've got a problem, and we should say, how can we help? And so uh, I, uh, I thank you for your service. I thank you for all of you who are here for your service. And I hope, uh, <clears throat> I hope that hearing, uh, hearing you will, uh, will inspire more veterans to do exactly what you're doing. Sign up. Get ready for more stimulus checks from Congress. So President Biden is taking immediate action to push forward his Build Back Better bill through Congress. And the IRS has announced that 22 million payments have been sent out this month in regards to tax returns and stimulus checks. The tax season actually kicked off on January 24th and the IRS has issued more than 22 million tax refunds worth about $78 billion. The IRS reported today that as of February 18th, the average refund was $3,300 was $3,536. Some tax experts predict smaller refunds for families who receive the advanced child tax credit and borrowers who pause student loan payments. The latest filing season, the commissioner of the IRS said, we urge extra attention to those who received an economic impact payment or an advanced child tax credit last year. People should make sure they report the correct amount on their tax return to avoid delays. The IRS sent about 7.4 million math error notices for stimulus payment mistakes from January 1st through July 15th, 2021, delaying refunds, and many people are still waiting for a resolution. While the IRS couldn't issue refunds for the earned income tax credit or the additional child tax credit by law until mid-February, those payments should reach filers by March 1st. And according to the IRS, you can check your refund status with the Where's My Refund online tool. Now also, those who welcome the new baby to their family in 2021 could qualify to receive up to $5,000 on their tax refund this year. This is due to two tax credits and a $1.9 trillion aid package President Biden signed into law. Parents who meet eligibility requirements will receive $3,600 thanks to an expanded credit this year, and a $1,400 stimulus check for dependents. Eligible parents qualify for both a child tax credit and stimulus check as long as their baby was born by the end of 2021, and they claim the newborn as dependent when they file their taxes this year. Many people, everybody, already received a $1,400 stimulus check, but because the checks were in advance of a 2021 tax credit, eligible parents can receive the payment for their newborn this year when filing taxes. So everybody, just make sure to keep an eye out for your letter from the IRS. And Representative AOC Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez took to Twitter to urge President Biden to act on student loans as soon as possible, adding that the president should use his, his executive authority to advance progressive caucus like stimulus checks, student debt forgiveness, and climate change policy. Her statements come after President Biden said that a deal was close on a Build Back Better bill, and that the legislation needs all 50 Senate Democrats to vote yes in order to pass. And without Manch support, many Democratic priorities, including the bill, like expanded child tax credit payments, climate change investments, and health care protections, are temporarily paused. Alexandria Ocas Cortez said on Twitter that it's unlikely that Democrats can get reelected without acting on progressive issues that lawmakers campaigned on, like canceling student loan debt. I want to explore a little bit about the role of corporate profiteering and its contributions. At to inflation, as we've kind of been discussing today, particularly in two areas, rent and groceries. Now, uh, in terms of housing, big corporations are exacerbating what is already a major housing supply crisis in the United States. We have these major, uh, often private equity backed companies that are gobbling up homes in our housing market which is already creating excess scarcity on top of the housing scarcity that already exists. And then by constricting that supply, we're also seeing a lot of these major, huge multi-billion dollar companies then either flip those properties and just resell them at a higher rate due to that uh, artificially inflated price, or they hold on and hoard this housing stock and rent out at exorbitant prices. Uh, Dr. Zandi, isn't it the case that the average American now has to compete with major companies like Invitation Homes, whose parent company is Blackstone, which is the largest private uh, equity company in the world, when they're in the market for a home? Yeah, I think uh, obviously the institutional investors and mom and pop investors uh, are a, a much larger, as I mentioned earlier, they're one quarter of all home sales at the end of last year. So they are big players and that's nationwide. So in some markets, if you go to an Atlanta or a Phoenix, uh, you know, or, a, or Boise, they're, you know, much higher than a third to 40% of the market. So yeah, they're playing a very large role. They don't, they don't affect the amount of housing stock, right? I mean, 
is the home is still there. It's mm -hmm. changing. We're going from single family home ownership though to rental. So it's making yes. it more difficult. And available home housing buyers stock for purchase, home. I should clarify. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So it is it's definitely having an impact there. And that's why it's very critical in my view for lawmakers to really focus on the kinds of things to increase the supply Thank so you. that you know that this becomes less of an yes. issue. Thank you, Dr. Zandi. And it does seem as though, I mean, and so to clarify, the, the image that we have here is that you have a young couple, you know, they tried to do the right thing. They were told that if you go to college, you'll get a good job. They graduate with hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, or tens of thousands of dollars in student debt, but they work through it. Perhaps they have a young kid. They want to get, a, a, you know, a two, three bedroom home. And, um, and they they're competing against the largest private equity firm in the world to purchase a home. In fact, companies like Blackstone, Zillow, and Bedrock are buying up to 15% of available homes. But what I find interesting here is that they're purchasing them in minority and low-income neighborhoods specifically, particularly in metro areas like New York, Atlanta, and Detroit. About one in every seven homes in the United States is being bought by a corporation at an inflated, an inflated price. Uh, Dr. Drummer, did you know, um, we're seeing here that even in communities like mine in Queens, uh, renters are now facing drastic rent hikes as large as 30 to 50% up from what they were paying last year. Can you expand a little bit on how this concentration of corporate power and uh, and the skyrocketing costs of housing are being disproportionately felt in low income, working class, black and Latino neighborhoods? Thank you, Representative, for uh, the great question. Uh, this is the market that we have created for housing in America. Uh, right now, six million renter households are currently behind on rent. Again, as stated previously, that is double the pre-pandemic baseline. And two thirds of these people are people of color. In 2021 alone, rents increased by at least 10% in 149 metropolitan areas. And what we're seeing around the country is a failure of policy and law to address the acute shortage of housing. If someone wants to make the case that this is just how markets are supposed to work, uh, they can. My view is that our current housing crisis constitutes a serious, significant series of market failures that require robust policy response at the federal, state, Thank and local you. level. Uh, thank you, Dr. Drummer. I have uh, one more question as well. I want to explore a, a policy possibility with you. You know, there are a lot of ideas that are explored. The United States has very different housing policies than, uh, than other countries and, and areas. What do you make of the idea of a public institution that purchased distressed real estate 